Hi, so ready to wrap up chapter three um, with this video. So we're looking at section 3.5, which is the five number summary and box plots. So the objectives for this section, we want to be able to compute the five number summary, and then lastly, draw and interpret box plots. So box plots is a visual way um, for us to look at the five number summary. <coughs> so first we want to compute the five number summary. So you might be wondering, what is the five number summary? So the five number summary of a set of data consists of the smallest value, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the largest value. So we organize the five number summary in this order. All right, we don't always have to you know, label them. If we write five numbers in this order, then um, when we write five number summary, then we'll, we'll know what those mean and what each one is. All right, so um, having examples, we've looked at this um, data set a few times now. So we have um, travel time and minutes to work for seven employees of a startup blood development company. So we've already found the quartiles with this data set. So remember the first thing we want to do is to um, put this in order from smallest to biggest. Right. And we already know uh, that this is the median. We already found that this is Q1. And we already found that this value is Q3. So then I also know that this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value, right? So we're just putting it together, you know, what this five number summary um, represents, right? So these five specific things that we've already looked at. So we could put this in a table if you wanted, right, where we have the men, oops, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the max. So we have five, 18, 23, 36, and 43. All right, and you could do this in StatCrunch as well if you wanted to build this table, right? So I have this data already input in a stat crunch. I could go to stat, summary stats by column. Um, I want to look at the variable commute. And then now I just need to pick um, the variable, like the statistics that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do these in order. Um, so we want the, the men, oops, we want the men um, quartile one. The median, oops, hang on, that didn't, um, it's got to hold down control. I must have not held it down. Um, no control click, it should work. Um, let me try again. Min, Q1, there we go. Um, the median, and then Q3. And then we want the max. So notice if I want these in a specific order, the order I click in that is what shows up up here, over here on the right. And then if I hit compute, um, that's also the order that's in the table, right? So if I just want those in order, I can select it in that way. Um, and those are the numbers that we just found. Right? So then now I want to look at an example of a larger data set. Um, I'm not going to use this data set though. Uh, instead, I'm going to use a data set we've already worked with, the Chicago salaries.csv. So this is on canvas, Chicago underscore salaries.csv. Um, so instead of looking at the well, that's kind of hard to read. Um, let me switch to darker font. Right, so we're looking at Chicago salaries. Not CSV. And instead of this RO, ROI, return on investment variable, um, we're going to look at um, the variable. Um, it's annual salaries, I believe.
All right, so we want to find the five number summary. So we want to make a table. We want the min, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the max. So you could open up this data set um, from Canvas and copy and paste it into here, uh, which I already have, um, have up. So we're going to go to stat, summary stats, column, and um, I'm, I'm just going to leave what's already highlighted because um, it turns out like this automated default of um, the summary statistics, it includes everything that we're looking for that um, might not be in the order that we're um, after. So you gotta for, don't forget to click on the variable here. Right. So, um, you know, there's my min, there's my Q1, my median, Q3, and my max, right? So that gives me the five number summary. So I just need to take those numbers and I can fill it in my table. So min was 12,840, quartile one is 76,266. The median was 90,024, Q3 was 96,060, and the max is 300,000. All right. So then now we want to look at drawing a box plot. So to draw a box plot, we're going to need to know the quartiles, find the interquartile range, so that way we can figure out the lower and upper fences, right? And the whole idea with finding the upper and lower fences is so that way I can figure out what values are um, outliers and what are not. And then I'm gonna draw a number line, right? Long enough that can include the min minimum and maximum values of my data set. And then I'm gonna put vertical lines at quartile one, the median and Q3, and then I'm gonna make that into a box, right? Um, and then um, next I'm going to um, draw a line from Q1 to the smallest data value that's larger than the lower fence and draw a line from Q3 to the largest data value that is smaller than the upper fence. So in other words, I'm drawing the whiskers to the smallest and biggest values that are not considered outliers. And then the um, data values that are considered outliers, you put an asterisk, right? And notice I skipped over step three. Um, so this is something you can put into your box plot. You can label where the lower and upper fences are. Um, I think I think that's okay. Um, personally, I think it's a little confusing to do that because um, some people want to draw their um, their whisker to the lower and upper fence. So I normally leave that part out, but um, but that's listed in in the textbook. Right, so, so this um, we could put is optional. Right, so then um, here, um, example three, we have that data set with the commute times and we want to draw a box plot. So I already know the five number summary, right? Um, you know, my minimum is five, Q1, is 18, my median is 23. Oops, I'm not showing up very good. Um, let's see. And then Q3 was 36, and my maximum value was 43. Right, so I need to calculate um, my upper and lower fences, right? So my lower fence would be equal to Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, right? Which would be equal to Q1, which is 18 minus 1.5 times, and then the interquartile range is Q3, which is 36 minus Q1, which is 18. Right. So if you throw that in your calculator, you should get negative 9. And then the upper fence 
right equation is Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, which would be equal to uh, 36 plus 1.5 times 36 minus 18. If you throw that in your calculator, you should get 63, right? Something to point out is negative 9 is less than my minimum value of 5. So what that tells me is there's no outliers to the left, right? I don't have any values that are less than negative 9, um, so we're good. And then 63 is greater than my maximum of 43. So in other words, I have no values that are bigger than 63, so therefore there's no outliers to the right, right? So there's no outliers in this data set using that definition of the lower and upper fence. Right? So then I need to draw a number line. We want to include my min and max values, so I chose to go up by fives. And then we're going to draw um, a vertical line at Q1, which is 18, so somewhere around here. And then we need one at the median, which is 23, so somewhere around here. And then we need to draw another vertical line at Q3, which is 36, so somewhere around here. And then we're going to make this into the box. All right, so that's referred to as the box. And then we need to draw the whiskers. So the right whisker is going to go to the biggest data value that's not an outlier. So in this case, it turns out to be the max, which is 43. And then the left whisker is going to go to the smallest data value that's not an outlier, which in this case would be 5, right? It's, it's actually the min in this case. Right? Um, so as I was saying, you know, this part and this part, these are called the whiskers. And this thing is called the box, right, in the middle. Um, and this distance of the box, that's the interquartile range, right? Um, that distance would be the interquartile range because I take Q3 minus Q1. So it's a way to visualize some of those things that we've been talking about, right? We can look at a distribution with, with a box plot or sometimes called a box and whisker plot. Right. So in this video, um, I'm introducing you to um, the five number summary and box plots. And then I have another video that follows this that goes a little more in depth um, about creating box plots given different situations and um, helping you think through that. And then um, answering some questions about box plots. And then I have another one where you're matching box plots with histograms. All right, so you want to make sure you watch the next video. Um, so in this example, I want to show you how to make a box plot um, using StatCrunch. So again, instead of using this data set, I'm going to use the Chicago salaries. That CSV. And then instead of using that variable, right, we'll use the annual salary. Right. So I'm just going to pull over my stat crunch with this information. Um, you're just going to go to graph and then go to box plot. And then I need to pick annual salary. Um, and then I should just be able to hit compute. And we have this box plot. Right. So it's important to denote here um, that it looks like, you know, all of these dots here, this blue line, it looks like they're all, it's almost like a, um, a continuous line, but these are actually a bunch of little dots, right? These are showing all the outliers. So in this data set, um, there's, a, there's a lot of outliers in it. Um, so this, this line here is the largest value, data value that's not an outlier and this line here would, rep would go to, so this is the end of the whisker, this goes to the smallest data value that's not an outlier. And then, um, you know, this, this line here would be Q1, this line would be uh, the median, and this line is Q3, 
right? So this is the box plot. And um, I drew a horizontal box plot um, by hand. This is a vertical box plot, right? So they're both okay, just depending on if you want your um, number line to go horizontally or uh, vertically. Right. All right. So then the next um, part of the notes is looking at um, how box plots um, and quartiles can help describe the shape of a distribution. So you can see like um, at the top we have histograms which we've looked at for a distribution shape and then we can look at how they match up to histograms, right? So like this first one is skewed right. So the histogram is pretty clear how it's skewed right. Right, we have um, like this large hump value on the left and then like this long tail on the right, right? So it looks, you know, like this, this shape, right? Um, so looking at the box plot, notice that this is a small whisker and this is a really long whisker. So that's how you can tell that it's skewed right. Um, where this one, you know, this, this distribution shape looks symmetrical, right? It actually looks unimodal, uh, like bell-shaped. So in this case, when you're looking at the box plot, notice how the whiskers look, um, look to be about the same size and the median's kind of in the center, right? So that looks pretty symmetrical, right? And then for skewed left, um, you know, this histogram is skewed left, right, with a long tail on the left side. So looking at the box plot, Again, uh, notice the long whisker here and the shorter whisker here, and how the median's kind of shifted over, right? That, that's a good indicator that, that it's skewed left, right? So you want to get comfortable with that. Like I said, I have some more practice with this in the next video. So then the very last thing we want to do is compare two distributions using um, box plots. So we're going to use the Wendy's versus McDonald's data um, from section 3.2. Um, so I'm going to pull, pull that up. So this is on on Canvas under the data sets module. So it's Wendy's versus McDonald's dot CSV. Alright, so I just need to so I copied that and just need to go back to Stack Crunch. I'm going to um, get a new data table, click here, and I'll do control V to paste that in there. And then I can go to graph box plot um, and select my variable. Um, but something here I want to do is I want to group this by restaurant, right? And hit compute. So what this will do is group my data by restaurant and shows a separate box plot for each, right? So if you remember when we originally looked at this data, we were thinking about, you know, which line would you rather um, stand in, McDonald's or Wendy's? And, um, you know, um, looking at this box plot, I think it makes an makes even stronger case, you know, for wanting to use Wendy's. Because you'll notice um, that, you know, we have some outliers in Wendy's, but for the most part, my values are pretty close together, right? So Wendy's line is more consistent, where McDonald's is kind of all over the place, right? So it's possible that I could wait um, less time in the McDonald's line, um, but there's also a chance of me waiting a lot longer, right? Like these like um, really crazy values out here, right? So there's a much bigger range where Wendy's is closer together, right? So when I'm comparing these, um, you know, something that's often useful is to compare like the medians, right? So like the median wait time for McDonald's, this line is shorter, you know, smaller than this median for Wendy's, this line here. Um, so you know kind of the typical value McDonald's you spend less time in uh, but then if you look at the range like the length of the box right that kind of gives you an idea for dispersion so um, McDonald's has a lot more dispersion in the data right this box is a lot longer remember that box um, is telling you like the interquartile range right and so this Wendy's box is a lot smaller right and then also when you compare the whiskers, that just kind of shows you the range of the typical values in the data set. Um, so Wendy's range is a lot smaller, right? So those are just some things that can be useful, right, when looking at those. And then um, if I want to look at the Chicago's data set, right, we could also build um, a histogram from this data. And I could group this by, um, let's say, like department. 
and hit compute. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do a histogram. Um, I meant to do a um, box plot. The annual salary grouped by department. Right, there we go. That's what I wanted. So this has, um, you know, if I make this larger, this has a whole bunch of box plots on it, right? And because there's a whole bunch of departments in this data set, and so like this is the admin um, her herning department, this is the animal control, um, aviation, and so forth, right? So there's all these different departments, and it's kind of hard to read um, what's on the bottom because they're so small together. But if I hover over it, it tells you the department. Right, and also like the number of values, number of outliers, and things of, of that nature. So we could, um, you know, browse through and, and kind of compare all these at once, and, and maybe you might want to group these a little differently and compare things. Um, but if I was looking at all of these um, in, in this way, and I was an administrator, you know, some things that would really stick out to me is like this department here, which is the mayor's office. There's like this huge like range and, and values, right? That's that's kind of alarming to me. I might want to figure out why, why that's the case. Um, other things like this department, um, the fire department, and this department here, uh, the police department, there's a whole bunch of outliers, right? Both of these have tons of, of outliers in there. Um, so that might be a little, um, a little alarming to me. I might try to figure out why that's the case, right? Um, so those are some things that stick out to me, but we could compare medians and interquartile ranges and all that kind of thing, just uh, moving across, right? Um, all right, so that's all I have for this section. So make sure you check out my um, next video to, to give you some more practice with box plots. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, bye.